this example of Southern Unionism, of rebellion within the Confederacy, wasn't just isolated to Jones County. There were other examples of it through the South. Um, the fact that there were mixed race rebellions that occurred through the South, that there were slave rebellions that occurred at the time, led me into an area of study which almost on its own became interesting to me. I went to Columbia University to meet with Eric Foner, who's like the dean of Reconstruction historians, because so much of what's really interesting about this movie isn't just in the Civil War period. It's how Newt Knight kept fighting for the rights of African Americans all through the post-war era, um, fighting, fighting white supremacist organizations, and um, standing up for the rights of freedmen all through Reconstruction. So I was fascinated with the post-war era that I also didn't know anything about. So I went to Foner. And instead of giving me answers, which I'm used to getting when I do research for a movie, you know, I'm a movie guy, I figure they'll just be nice to me, he just gave me a reading list, which was so in, kind of intriguing. And I went away and read the books and came back two weeks later, and he went, oh, well, those aren't bad questions. And he gave me another reading list. That was a fascinating period of study. I was simultaneously learning about Newt Knight in Jones County and the internal struggles that went on of unionism and of this uh, rebellion of yeoman farmers. At the same time, I was trying to get a broader understanding of the era and what was involved. And what I came to realize was how much of the history had been rewritten, how much of the history had been hidden, how much of a mythology that the Confederacy was consolidated just wasn't true, how much um, misinformation existed. And so um, it kind of redoubled my desire to do the film, and that's what really uh, led to it. It's very, very true what happened. Um, this man named Newt Knight, um, he owned no slaves. He came from an area of southeast Mississippi that had, um, well, I wouldn't call it horrible soil, but not great soil. You couldn't have the sprawling kind of agribusiness or plantations that existed in the Delta, Mississippi Delta. And so um, these were yeoman farmers who subsisted off the land, and they had no vested interest in the war, and they were opposed to slavery and opposed to the slaveocracy. But Newt, in particular, had an ideological opposition to slavery. It's interesting that besides just being a yeoman farmer who owned no slaves, and you would say, well, that was the reason he was opposed to slavery. He also came from a family where he owned no slaves, his father owned no slaves, but his grandfather did own slaves. So what we know, and again, this is not like a president or a king where you have a great written record. You have to sort of glean from the facts what the truth was. A decision was made in the Knight family to not be a slaveholding family, and obviously a lot of this um, conviction transferred down to Newt. But yes, he's a real person. The rebellion really did happen. There's controversy about that, but we're in fact putting up a website with all our primary sources and our footnotes that people will be able to go to to see the actual documents that substantiate the fact that this rebellion existed, many of which are letters from Confederate soldiers talking about it, right? It's not, I don't think this is really a judgment call. There was a rebellion. There was a night company. They did raise a flag over the courthouse in Ellisville. Um, it was an anti-slavery, anti-Confederate rebellion, and it's indisputable that Newt continued to fight for the rights of African Americans living in a mixed-race community uh, in the post-war period.